फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू ड्रॉ प्रेशर वॉल्यूम एंड टेम्परेचर एंड्रोपी डायग्राम फॉर रैंक एंड सायकल व्हिच इज थर्मोडायनॅमिक व्हेपर सायकल सेकंड क्वेश्चन सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लेम फॉर रैंक एंड सायकल बाय युजिंग फॉर्म्युलेज लेट अस अंडरस्टँड हाऊ टू ड्रॉ प्रेशर वॉल्यूम अँड टेम्परेचर एंड्रोपी डायग्राम फॉर रैंक एंड सायकल विच इज नोन ॲज द मॉडिफाईड कार्नॉट सायकल दिस इज थर्मोडायनॅमिक व्हेपर सायकल बिकॉज स्टीम इज यूज ॲज अ वर्किंग सबस्टन्स इफ वी ऑब्झर्व दिस डायग्राम हिअर इज बॉयलर टर्बाईन कंडेन्सर अँड हॉट वेल दीज आर द फोर मेन कॉम्पोनंट थ्रू विच द वर्किंग सबस्टन्स इज पासिंग वेन द डिफरंट प्रोसेसेस आर टेकिंग प्लेस लेट अस कन्सिडर द इनिशियल कंडिशन ऑफ द वर्किंग सबस्टन्स सो दिस वर्किंग सबस्टन्स इज हॅविंग डिफरंट फेज दॅट इज लिक्विड देन वेपर so we will consider here 1 kg of saturated water at pressure p1 volume v1 and temperature t1 is entering into the boiler so at the entrance of the boiler we will consider here point 1 which is saturated water that is this is the liquid phase now we will consider here the point 1 that is at pressure p1 and here will be volume v1 and for temperature t1 so if we observe this temperature entropy diagram here is saturated liquid line and here is the saturated vapor line because the working substance is saturated water that is it is in liquid phase we have to consider point 1 on this saturated liquid line so i will consider here the point 1 which is having temperature t1 that's entropy is one now we will understand the different processes which are taking place so process 1 to 2 that is the heat addition at constant pressure and temperature now if we observe this boiler in boiler heat is supplied to the saturated water so when this heat is supplied the saturated water is getting converted into dry saturated vapor so this heat addition process is taking place at constant pressure and temperature so this is the condition so heat addition is taking place at constant pressure and temperature and how to calculate the heat absorbed during this process so we know that saturated water that is saturated liquid is getting converted into saturated vapor so heat absorbed that is nothing but the latent heat of vaporization and this process is taking place at constant pressure p1 so we have to find out what is the latent heat of vaporization corresponding to pressure p1 or we can say pressure p2 now what is the effect on the other parameters because of this heat addition so we have to keep pressure constant temperature constant so when the heat is added then its a volume is getting increased as well as entropy is also getting increased so we will show this process 1 to 2 so i will show here the point 2 then p1 is equal to p2 here is volume v2 and saturated water is getting converted into saturated vapor so on this second line saturated vapor line we have to show here the point 2 and here entropy will be s2 and how to calculate heat absorbed so with the help of steam table we can find out this value so heat is getting absorbed that is equal equal to latent heat of vaporization during the process 1 to 2 so here we can say that heat absorbed is equal to hf g1 which is equal to hf g2 because uh, this heat is that is the enthalpy is considered when this f is used for this liquid and g is used for this vapor so here do hfg we have to take and the suffix 1 and 2 we have to use corresponding to this pressure p1 and pressure p2 because p1 is equal to p2 and therefore hfg1 which is equal to hfg2 and this is the value for the heat absorbed
so it is important to know that why suffix f and g both are considered because in latent latent heat phase is getting changed from the liquid to vapor that is from fluid to gas that's why here f and g is used now we will move for the next process so next process now i will show here the point 2 i will show arrow also and next process is isentropic expansion so in turbine expansion process is taking place at constant entropy so whenever the entropy remains constant that means there is no any heat added and no any heat rejected during this process so we will show here process 2 to 3 so at the outlet or exit point here will be point 3 and i will show arrow also that is this process 2 to 3 in turbine is taking place isentropic expansion so entropy will remain constant so we have to show straight vertical line now what is the effect of expansion on other parameters that is pressure volume and temperature so when expansion is taking place that means its a pressure is getting decreased as pressure is getting decreased its a temperature is also getting decreased and its a volume is getting increased so we have to show all these process that is pressure is getting decreased volume is increased so we will show here the point 3 and i will show here this the process 2 to 3 where pressure is p3 and volume is v3 now temperature is getting decreased but entropy will remain constant So this process is getting completed. Now if we observe what is the condition of working substance at point 3. So point 3 is in between saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line. That's why we can say that the steam is wet steam. Some water particles are present here because this is not the dry dry saturated steam. So this red line indicates the dry saturated steam. So this steam is the wet steam. Now we will move for the next process 3 to 4. So I have told you earlier this Rankine cycle is known as the modified Carnot cycle. So why this is known as modified Carnot cycle? Because here the cooling process is taking place until the whole steam is condensed into the water. So this is the difference in between Carnot cycle and Rankine cycle. So, we have to convert this whole steam at point 3 to the, set, uh, we have to condense up to it reaches to the saturated liquid. That is whole steam should be getting converted into water. Now, what is this process 3 to 4? That is, it's cooling or we can say heat rejection process. So, heat is rejected at constant temperature and pressure and until whole steam is condensed into the water so this is the condition so if we observe the diagram here is the process 3 to 4 so at the outlet of condenser we will show here the point 4 and here wet steam is converted into water so we have to show this process so this process is taking place at constant pressure and temperature so we have to keep pressure and temperature constant but what is the effect on other parameters so if we observe due to condensation or due to cooling entropy is getting decreased and in the same way volume is also getting decreased now we have to show point 4 up to the saturated liquid line so this is very important because whole steam is getting converted into water so t3 is equal to t4 and here t1 is equal to t2 now here also we have to show constant pressure so its a volume is getting decreased and here P3, here will be 0.4, P3 is equal to P4. Now how to find out the heat rejected? So again if we observe, here is phase change process is taking place. 
so whenever the phase change process is taking place that means there is the latent heat is getting evolved means here wet steam that is the mixture of liquid plus vapor that is fg we can say suffix fg is getting converted into liquid so here no any vapor particle is there at point 4 so here also latent heat is also considered because phase change process is taking place during the cooling so heat rejected is equal to x3 hfg3 now what is this x3 so x3 is known as the quality or we can say also dryness fraction because what is the amount of water particles are there that is known as the from the uh, this notation x3 and we have to take this hfg3 now how to find out this hfg3 this process or we can say cooling process is taking place at constant pressure so we have to find out this value of hfg3 for the given pressure p3 or we can say for the given pressure p4 because here p3 is equal to p4 so whenever in a given problem pressure or we can say condenser pressure is given then from this pressure we have to find out from this steam table value of hfg and that is nothing but the value of uh, heat rejected uh, suppose here the uh, dryness fraction is given then we have to multiply also for this for uh, dryness fraction now we will understand the next process 4 to 1 which is warming at constant volume if we observe the diagram here is the hot well in which the warming process is taking place so here at point 4 this working substance is in saturated liquid phase and this phase is remains constant when this warming process is taking place. So what is the effect of warming on the parameters of temperature, pressure and volume? So volume will remain constant. So we can say that here because of warming temperature is getting increased, pressure is also getting increased and entropy uh, is getting increased. So we have to show all these points. And phase of the working substance remains constant. So while joining the point 4 and point 1, we have to join along the saturated liquid line. So we will join these two points. Here entropy is S4 and here is entropy S1. So S1 is greater than S4. And now this process is taking place at constant volume. So we have to draw here straight vertical line and we will join these two points. Now we will find out what is the amount of heat absorbed. So for, for that we have to find out what is the enthalpy at point 1 and enthalpy at point 4. Now we will find out these enthalpies corresponding to pressure that is for point 1 we will take the pressure P1 or P2 because P1 is equal to P2 and for this point 4 we will uh, take the corresponding pressure P3 or P4 because P3 is equal to P4. Now, if we take pressure P1 or P2, then from steam table we have to find out the enthalpy. Now, at point 1, what is the phase of working substance? It is at saturated liquid. So, for saturated liquid, we have to take the enthalpy that is HF. So, I will say that HF at point 1 that is HF1. Now in the same way at point 4, point 4 is on the saturated liquid line. So we have to take the enthalpy at point 4 corresponding to pressure P3 or P4 that is also equal to HF that is the value of HF from the steam table. So I will say that it is HF4. So if we take the difference in between these enthalpies then we will get the amount of heat absorbed. And this heat is known as the sensible heat because phase of the working substance during this heating remains constant. Now, again, if we observe this enthalpy at point 1, which is equal to enthalpy at point 2, because temperature will remain constant and pressure is also constant. So, we can say that HF1 is equal to HF2. And 
enthalpy at point 4 is equal to enthalpy at point 3 because here is also pressure remains constant and temperature is also constant so hf4 is equal to hf3 now we can take here instead of hf1 and hf4 i will write here hf2 minus hf3 so heat absorbed that is equal to hf2 minus hf3 we will understand some formulas which are useful to solve the problems first one heat absorbed during complete cycle so here heat absorbed during the process 1 to 2 as well as during the process 4 to 1 now what happens during the process 1 to 2 here is the phase change is taking place and the latent heat is getting evolved so how to find out this latent heat so corresponding to pressure p1 or pressure p2 we will find out the latent heat that is liquid is getting converted into vapor so we have to use suffix f and g so here hfg1 hfg1 or hfg2 we have to take so this hfg1 is equal to hfg2 because pressure p1 is equal to p2 so we have to use this value and we will take here as a hfg2 then heat absorbed during the process 4 to 1 so during the process 4 to 1 we know that hf2 minus hf3 so we have to take this so if we simplify this then we will get h2 minus hf3 because we know that hf2 plus hfg2 is known as h2 so h2 minus hf3 is the formula to calculate the heat absorbed during the cycle then we will calculate the heat rejected so heat is getting rejected during the process 3 to 4 so how to calculate this heat rejected so this heat rejected we have to take the enthalpy difference so enthalpy at point 3 that is h3 now we know that this enthalpy at point 3 uh, point 3 is the weight steam so we will take this h3 and how to find out this h3 so from steam table h3 is equal to hf3 plus x3 hfg3 so at point 3 this dryness fraction or quality of steam is given then from steam table we can find out this hf3 and x3 hfg3 and minus we have to take the enthalpy at point 4 that is hf4 now if we observe here at point 3 and 4 the enthalpy that is hf3 and hf4 are same because this is the saturated enthalpy at point 4 is for saturated liquid and if hf h3 is equal to hf3 plus x3 hfg3 if i take then this hf3 th this is also the enthalpy at point 3 for the saturated water so p3 is equal to p4 so we can say that hf3 is equal to hf4 so these two are getting cancelled because hf4 is having minus sign and heat rejected is equal to x3 hf g3 so we have to take this value to calculate the heat rejected now what is work done so work done is equal to heat absorbed minus heat rejected so we will take heat absorbed that is h2 minus hf3 minus x3 hf g3 now if i take this minus sign as a common then in the bracket hf3 plus x3 hf g3 so hf3 plus x3 hf g3 that is nothing but h3 so we will take here h2 minus h3 then efficiency so efficiency that is nothing but work done by heat absorbed so work done is h2 minus h3 and heat absorbed so if we uh, take the simplified form then h2 minus hf3 so these are the formulas we will solve one problem a steam power plant is supplied with dry saturated steam at a pressure of 12 bar and exhaust into condenser at 0.1 bar calculate the Rankine efficiency by using steam table let us understand the given data dry saturated steam at a pressure 12 bar is given if we observe the diagram then at point 2 steam is dry and saturated steam so we can say that here the pressure at point 2 that is p2 is given we will write here p2 is equal to 12 bar then condenser pressure is 0 0.1 bar if we observe this diagram here process 3 to 4 is taking inside this condenser 
so condenser pressure that is the pressure at the entrance of the condenser p3 is equal to 0.1 bar is given so we will write here pressure p3 is equal to 0.1 bar now we have to find out the efficiency of the Rankine cycle that is Nita R. So what is the formula? So formula is H2 minus H3 divided by H2 minus HF3. Now how to find out the H2 that is the enthalpy at point 2. If we observe enthalpy at point 2, here is the point 2 where the condition of the steam is dry and saturated steam. And at point 2 pressure is given P2. So at pressure P2 is equal to 12 bar. We have to use the steam table. That is the pressure table. In the first column pressure is given. Now for 12 bar there are 3 types of enthalpies are given. That is HF, HFG and HG. So which enthalpy that we have to refer? If we observe here is dry and saturated steam. So we have to take the suffix G. That is H2 is equal to Hg and which is equal to 2782.7 that we have to take. So I will write here at 12 bar H2 which is equal to Hg which is equal to 2782.7. So this value we have to refer. Now we will move for the next we have to find out H3. We will first find out what is the condition of steam at point 3. So this point 3 is in between saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line. So at point 3, H3 is equal to HF3 plus X3 HF G3. Now this H3, the X3 that is uh, dryness fraction is unknown. But we can find this HF3 and HF G3 at pressure P3 because at point 3 pressure is P3 that is at 0.1 bar. So again we will refer the pressure table and we will take the pressure is equal to 0.1 bar. So here will be the in the first page on the first page we will take here 0.1 bar and we have to refer value that is HF and HFG because here HF3 and HFG3. So I will again write here at 0.1 bar I will take HF3 that is HF HF3 which is equal to 191.8 and HFG3 that is the value of HFG we will take here 2392.9 so these are the values that we have to take. Now what is the remaining value that is we have to find out this X3. Now how to find out the dryness fraction or quality at point 3. If we observe the point 2 and point 3 here this, this process 2 to 3 is isentropic process that is S2 is equal to S3. Now what is the Entropy at point 2 because point 2 is on the saturated vapor line S2 is equal to Sg. So I will again write here at 12 bar S2 is equal to Sg because point 2 is on the saturated vapor line. So we have to refer this value at 12 bar that is Sg. So at 12 bar Sg is equal to uh, 6.519 that is S2 SG2 I will write and now what about the S3 because this point 3 is weight steam so for this weight steam we have to take S3 is equal to that is point 3 is on the at the pressure of 0.1 bar so at 0.1 bar how to find out this S3 so S3 is equal to SF3 plus X3 SFG3. Now at 0.1 bar again we have to refer this pressure table and here is on the four, here is 0.1 bar. Now S3 is equal to SF3. So we have to take the value of SF3 0.649 plus X3 into SFG. So SFG 7.502. So this S3 is equal to S2 because this process is isentropic. So we can write here 
6.519 on the left hand side 6.519 is equal to this is the right hand side so if we observe here is only one unknown term that is x3 and we can find out the value of x3 and when we find out this value of x3 we can put this value in the formula for h3 and hf3 and hfg3 are known from this team table and we can find out this h3 then we can put all these values and we can find out the what is the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. Calculated value of x3 that is equal to 0.783. Now this value we have to put in the formula for h3 and h3 is equal to 2065.5 kilojoule per kilogram. Now we will put all the value in the formula for Rankine efficiency that is 2782.7 minus 2065.5 divided by 2782.7 minus 191.8 which is equal to 0 0.277 so this is the efficiency so we will multiply here with 100 that is equal to 27.7 percent and this is the answer.